Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Programming. Kevin here, and we are launching another rocket. There we go. It is away. It is flying far up into the atmosphere so that it can get into orbit using our very traditional uh, orbit ascent profile. Now, you'll notice right away that we are actually looking at a very different display and uh, the reason for that is that we're running a bit of a contract mission we're just trying to get a bunch of our contracts fulfilled which is not anything exciting we're not necessarily building anything new and i was worried that this was going to be really really boring so i was trying to figure out how do we make something that would otherwise be tedious somewhat interesting and i decided well since we're running an automated space program let's try and actually imagine that we are mission control so what I went ahead and did is find a couple of different mods. One of them is Telemachus, which is providing the information that is powering this sort of heads-up display. And the other one is Hullcam VDS, which allows gives a whole bunch of different camera parts that allow us to just sort of see views that are actually attached to the craft rather than the traditional kind of third-person view, which is not, you know, the most realistic when you're going into space. You don't get to go to space with a little probe also going to space and pointing a camera watching your space progress and there we go our boosters on our craft are away and so yes i was playing around with this and i i have to say i really really kind of like this display telemachus will actually provide a bunch of different telemetry about your craft in real time uh, over the web but there are different um sort of dashboards that you can find. One of them that I particularly enjoy is this one that you're seeing that's called um, KERD, so Kerbal uh, Remote Display. The, the E is lowercase. And you can see up in the top right, we've got things like our apoapsis and our periapsis and our altitude and things like that, which is thankfully rising. We can look at our vessel's throttle and the G-force, and we can see if the lights are on. We can see to what extent the atmosphere is playing in and stuff. And we can look at the nav ball in the bottom. And then we've got, and this is the thing that I really like about uh, this particular dashboard, is that we've got the little view of the planet on the left. And it does seem to be jumping around a little bit. I think it's a little bit confused about it knows our current orbit and it knows our velocity and i think it's comp looking at one of the velocities and saying you're clearly transitioning too fast so it's bouncing around a little bit but still you know this is something that you might see in kind of a real space program you don't have a camera of the um you know you don't necessarily have a camera from space trained on the craft but you do have sort of a view above that you know that you know is perhaps simulating where you believe the craft is based on its various telemetry, and of course then we've got these various hull crab hull, hull cams in the bottom right, and this is actually I've gone ahead and uh, you know via the power of video editing kind of shrunken down that screen and put it in there uh, to cover up that little square, um, but we can see you know various views of the craft it is as it is making its way up into orbit, and we are just about at 70 kilometers, at which point our engine is going to cut out. We're, I mean, this is a very uh, standard craft. You know, we've flown these sort of things a dozen times already. And now it's just a matter of coasting our way up to apoapsis. But I have to say, I really kind of like this view. It's much more similar to what you would be doing um, if you were, say, working for an actual space program. Um, so the idea is that, and I'm not sure exactly whether or not we'll continue uh, using this, because there is certainly... Um, you know, some downsides as far as kind of being able to see exactly what's going on with your craft. But, you know, if the cameras are well placed, you know, this is theoretically um, what we kind of see uh, from, you know, real spacecraft. But though, you know, obviously with a slightly higher resolution Earth. And of course, we've got the the we are in space music letting us know that everything is okay but we can see like there you know it's it's a little bit kind of like Kerbal engineer we've got things like the inclination and altitude and actually if you use different uh, dashboards you can get even more information about the craft and um, we can see that the lights are off um, kind of in the middle there oh and there we go we're close to apoapsis and now it is time for us to burn up our fuel we see there's that resources tab um, sort of in the middle left that is showing our fuel and oxidizer and our electric charge on the very left. And I did discover that this is actually showing it uh, per stage. So we're hoping that we'll be able to finish our orbital uh, circularization before we run out of fuel. Our periapsis is still, what is it, 397, 300? Yeah, okay. Let's get up there. Now, granted, as you uh, 
as you burn fuel, the uh, benefit of the remaining fuel is higher because you're pushing less mass, which is helpful. But yes, yeah, so the idea with this craft is that we've got a bunch of contracts that are sitting there dirtying up our map view that I'm rather frustrated with, and we really need to kind of get them uh, managed. And so the idea is that we were just going to send a probe that kind of barely met the requirements and had a whole bunch of Delta V so that hopefully we could put it into um, various orbits and nail down those contracts. Because a bunch of our contracts are simply, we need a satellite in this particular orbit, please get it there. And there we go. We can watch, and there we go, there's the uh, the main stage drifting off into the background, and we fired up our engine that is gonna, that, you know, finished, finished this off, and now we can look at the top view, we can see that our solar panels had deployed, and I think that's the moon ahead of us, that little, uh, small little bit of light, which is great, and we can see, you know, we've got that lower view, and we've got Kerbin itself rotating slowly beneath us. So I think this is kind of cool. I'm not sure if we're going to stick with this or, you know, maybe we'll go back and forth between using this for uh, various things. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and at this point, take a look at the various mods and kind of how you get this set up. If this is something that you want to do with your own game, and then we'll come back and actually start getting those contracts underway. Okay, so here we are looking at our Contractor 1 that we just put into orbit. And this is a very simple craft because all it's designed to do is to get into several different orbits to fulfill various contracts. And you'll note that it does have these decouplers on here. That's because we have a contract that insists that we need to test these parts while they're in a suborbital trajectory around the moon. So hopefully we'll have enough fuel to get out there. We've got solar panels, various stuff. But the interesting thing is actually on the back here, we have this little telemark antenna and what this is going to do is when it's enabled it'll come out and then it will transmit the various telemetry related stuff about our craft which then can be accessed through the web and the other thing we've added is these little cameras there's nav cam and I guess I could change the name tag but we've got one that's pointed up we've got one that's pointed down we've got one that's pointed out and then finally we've got one tiny one here on the uh, launch clamps now these are coming directly from the mod and there are actually a ton of different types of camera there's you know various different color cameras and black and white cameras and um let's see there's a launch pad camera that is good at doing telescopic photo stuff they've really kind of gone all out with this mod um and these have different levels of zoom and different levels of distortion some of them are color and stuff but i figured let's just go with the simple ones for the time being so let's go ahead and throw this thing on the launch pad actually let me take off this uh there we go we'll throw this thing on the launch pad and uh just take a quick look at how that goes Alrighty, so here we are and i can right click on these cameras and click activate camera and now we're seeing that uh upward view so there we go that's uh, kind of how that was shot and of course then in editing i've gone through and kind of shrunken that down so that it fit with the actual dashboard um but let's come up here and yeah this this is a little unrealistic because it deploys in a rather non-aerodynamic way, but this will go ahead and start uh, throwing out the telemetry. It's got a download rate and various stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and click open link. And this pops up a little browser um, that is running on our local system on a particular port, and we can display various telemetry about the craft. And uh, now this isn't what I'm actually using. I'm using uh, KERD dot space which actually provides a little bit different of a display but you see it shows up all of this information this is all very customizable we can look at Kerbal maps which will show exactly where it's placed relative to Kerbin and what does this do oh I can change this to color relief or to slopes or various cool things and I can show the space centers oh there there's another space center pretty cool and let's see smart ASS flight control Oh yeah, I could stage. I probably shouldn't stage because this is a <laughs> this is just an example craft uh, to show how we set this up. But yes, the last thing that I want to kind of go through real quick is um, before we jump back is that if you go into KOS, there's an additional feature that you may not have been aware of, and this is Telnet. We're going to go ahead and use this. What this allows us to do is to connect to a craft from a terminal on various on your kind of whatever computer now if you just select telnet that means that you should be able to log in to 
your craft from your own machine. If you enable loopback, uh, or sorry, no, it's it's enabled by default, but if you disable loopback, then as long as you have the IP address for the machine that's running Kerbal Space Program, you can go ahead and connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable Telnet. And there's a little warning that says, you know, by the way, you're throwing up a server. If anybody has access to this, they could, you know, get into your game and steal your private craft file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, yes, I do want to enable the Telnet server and never ever show this again. And yes, it's it's, letting me know that the uh, it, it will allow me to connect via 10.0.0.8, which is my local IP address um, behind the behind the router. So anybody on my local IP address can remote in. But because I'm running a lot of my stuff on a separate machine, that's actually what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes again. And with that, let's jump back over to our mission control and we can test out this whole Telnet thing. Okay, so here we are, and I've opened up a terminal, and unfortunately there is a minimum width requirement, so I'm covering up a bit of <laughs> this page dashboard. But this is, by the way, is KRD space. And if you go down here, you can go ahead, oh, this doesn't stay open, and go to the gears, you can actually set the host and the port and tell it exactly where to look for the various stuff that you want. So we'll go ahead and close that and bring back up, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna type in telnet and the IP address of the machine that's running KSP and the port that Telnet is listening on, which by default is 5410, and I'll hit enter. And there we go. Now it says that I am in and I can pick a CPU to attach to and contractor one is the one that I want, so I'm gonna type one. And there we go. And this is exactly what you would see if you had opened up the terminal in the game. And I'm actually accessing this from a completely different computer. So I'm gonna type, um, Let's see, lock steering to retrograde. Hmm. No. Oh, you know what? It's because it's currently running the boot up program. Let's try that again. Lock steering to retrograde. And you can see, there we go. The craft is very slowly turning. There's not a lot of sass on this craft because we were trying to keep it budget friendly this is out there to make us contract money not real money or not be awesome all right uh, lock steering to up and now it is rotating again so we can do all sorts of cool stuff like this but one thing that we can't do and this is something that's true if you're typing it into the terminal uh, on screen or if you're doing this over telnet is that if you try and call a function now that is not going to work because you cannot actually call a function from within the main prompt. You have to do it through a program. Uh, you can't run, run functions in the main loop. You have to actually write a program. So I'm gonna go ahead and say edit uh, maneuver.ks. And of course that pops up the edit thing on the other screen. So okay, that's not, uh, yeah, not the best. Um, but what we can do is then upload stuff to the archive and then you know, transmit it there. Um, so let's go ahead and write just a really quick script that'll go ahead and execute the next maneuver node. And then we'll go ahead and through Telnet, we can tell it to run that whenever we have a maneuver node that is ready to get it into the right position. All right, so this one is going to be absurdly complicated. Are you ready? I hope so. So we're gonna type run maneuver.ks, which has our library that executes the next node. We've written that in previous episodes, so we've already got that. And then we're gonna run menuv exec node, and we're gonna go ahead and say true. Remember the uh, true false is whether or not it should use time warp to get to the node, or whether we wanna go ahead and let it run in real time. And that's all. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab that. I'm gonna throw it into the archive. And then when we tell that in, we can just tell it to run that program. And then when it runs that program, it'll execute that function for us. Okay, so as fun as it would be to go through and tell this thing to execute the script um, over and over and over as we create the maneuver nodes, we already have our boot script set up to automatically execute a file if it finds that it has the name of the ship name .ks. And so rather than opening up a terminal on our screen, which is a little shy of space, I ended up just going ahead and 
manually copying over that file multiple times every time we wanted it to execute the next maneuver node. And so you can see me here sort of messing around, trying to match up the orbits so that we can get credit for putting a ship into uh, that particular orbit. Now the idea here is that you need to have roughly the same apoapsis and periapsis and inclination and you need to remain stable for around 10 seconds. And so we started off by just sort of trying to match the orbit and then adjusting your inclination We were when we were further away from the planet. And you can see me here trying to do an awful lot of <laughs> finagling around because man these uh, these are tricky. The instant that you start playing with inclination um, your periapsis and apoapsis start messing around and so yes you can see this particular orbit was a bit challenging until I finally just sort of gave up on actually getting the inclination on the first try and just said okay we'll fix the inclination when we actually get our orbit out there so I think this is this is the one come on yeah so we're just gonna go ahead and match we got our contract for the first one and that's now helpfully out of our map view we're burning our way out there, having transmitted our automatically execute the maneuver node script. And you see there are those um, decouplers. We're going to use those at the end when we get um, to the moon, hopefully, provided we have enough fuel. And there we go, just trying to get that so that it is roughly good. It doesn't have to be exact for these contracts, but you want them to be good enough that you get the credit. So let's see, we got there. And, okay, here we go. Our orbit is increasing. We are getting up to our polar orbit. And perfect. And look at that. We actually end up with a moon encounter. And we've got our contract. And getting to the moon is perfect because that is where we want to be going. There's another contract that demands that we get into a polar orbit around the moon. And unfortunately, at this point, um, the uh, display stopped working for some reason. I wasn't paying too much attention to it, so I'm not exactly sure what was up with that, but it just sort of froze and stopped updating, so I figured why kind of leave that up and running. We'll just go ahead and jump into the map view uh, for the rest of this, and we're going ahead. We're very, very low on fuel, but we should have just enough that we can get into this orbit and then finally crash this thing into the moon, hopefully. If we can just get this darn polar thing going, and there we go. We've got that one. Now, it is worth noting that one of the remaining contracts that we will not be completing on this mission is to put a flag on the moon. And unfortunately, we can't really do that with probes. So we will have to take a look probably in maybe the next episode or two. Um, we will have to look at actually landing somebody on the moon. And there we go. Got our final uh, uh, orbital satellite contract. And now it is just time for us to go ahead and crash into the moon. So I updated the script and just said... Um, when the altitude is below the threshold, then go ahead and stage, because we've got those decouplers. There's nothing attached to them, but they will fire. So we're going ahead and executing one last maneuver. <laughs> this thing is rotating around like crazy. We should probably, probably update that script, but... Okay, so we, we come around, and yes, actually, it didn't fire the first time, because we did not have a connection to the Kerbal Space Center, which I suppose makes sense, but there we go. Bring it down, and now it is just a question of letting ourselves gracefully crash into the moon. I, um, I've i uploaded the script that says once we reach below, I think it was 10 kilometers, maybe, that uh, that's the point where we're good to fire away the uh, decouplers, which should be our final contract, at which point we will leave this wonderfully cheap um, and shoddy satellite um, to its to its fiery grave. But I, I don't know. I think it was cool to be able to play with uh, some of these camera mods. I think to some extent, we may end up continuing to use them. I'm not entirely sure of the heads-up display because it does seem like there is uh, a, a dearth of screen real estate. Um, it feels like it'd be really fun to use um, for various gaming stuff, but maybe not the best for videos. But yes, we can go ahead and switch around to these cameras. You can see some of the distortion. They actually did a really good job with a lot of this stuff in that um, you can see the sort of the wide-angle distortion and all of these various views and stuff. See, there we go. There's, you know, the moon stretching as it reaches the edge and... Or I guess that's not the moon. That'd be, uh... That'd be Kerbin, wouldn't it? And just this plus distant object enhancement, I think, really, really, really sells the effect. But okay. It is it is time for us to go ahead and, and crash. And our script should fire if we are below. So as long as we don't skip way, 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 way past it, we should be fine. So we'll go ahead and warp... Warp, 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 and bring ourselves crashing down. 
And come on. Oh, oh, there they go. And you can see the camera moving around as we uh, it realizes that we are on a on an impact trajectory. So yes, I think we will look at probably we want to get a kind of full satellite coverage around the moon before we land a Kerbin there so that we can ensure that it doesn't end up stranded in a dark spot of telecommunications. But then we can go ahead and get a Kerbin, a, a, a Kerbal into, uh, onto the moon, which will be great. It'll give us a lot of science. And at that point, we should be able to unlock various docking stuff and we can start building stations and refueling craft around uh, Kerbin, which will be super fun. And it is time, it is time for the death of this beautiful little spacecraft with its beautiful cameras and telemetry. And there we go. I will see you next time. Cheers.